Hey! Um, what you hear is my pump. I'm on my lunch break, and I'm getting my baby some lunch for tomorrow. If that bothers you, uh, you know, secret, like, you can watch any of the millions and billions of videos on YouTube, so, you know, bye. Um, but yeah, I am sort of phoning it in on videos this week. Um, if you see next week's video, uh, which I, I think I'm planning on still posting, I filmed a video last night, I did not want, I keep looking at my microphone, hello, um, hopefully you're not hearing the pump too badly, to the point where you can't hear me talking, but I'm sure you can hear it. Um, I filmed a video last night, Tuesday, that I really didn't want to film. Told you lunch break, right? And I was hoping to do the topic a little bit more justice, but I kind of just wanted to get it done. And then I realized that, um, this Thursday was going to be Valentine's Day, so maybe I should do a different topic that I had sort of planned for some day in the future. Why not talk about it today? But yeah, you get to see me in my lunch break surroundings. Um, the baby's at the babysitter today. And so that's the day that I take my pump home with me at lunch. And I pump multiple times. Like five times on these days. It gets old, but I'm getting used to it. Um, and so you get to see this. It's like, don't look at my husband's painting and 3D modeling and stuff. Um... I've only been married two and a half years, so everything grains of salt. But today's video is about like conflict, conflict resolution in marriage and how I use my planner to help me with that a little bit. Um, way back before we were engaged or anything, um, we started this sort of tradition of doing what we call serious night. Um, I tend to be a very non-confrontational, conflict-averse kind of a person. Um, and triggers specifically for me that give me anxiety are money-related things. Um, so it's a lot of times those kind of topics I tend to put off talking about. But then other kinds of topics also, just, you know, anything interpersonal, anything that affects us both. It's like a big topic that's a big conversation that you can't just have at a restaurant or whatever. Um those topics, they tend to build up to a point where it's like too much and then it breaks the dam and then there's an argument, you know? Um, or it's just stuff that needs to be discussed and hashed out, budgetary stuff for the household or whatever. Um, serious topics and so serious night. And then there's all of its sequels, you know, son of serious night, accountant of serious night. Um, and... <laughs> That's been sort of a thing that we've been doing for a long time, to sort of just say, all right, we need to schedule a serious night and discuss these topics. On the other hand, if there's something that, like, bothers me, that I'm putting off talking about, my husband might not even know that it's something that bothered me because I didn't want to bring it up at the time, didn't know how to articulate it, um, those things do tend to build up to become a fight, and you don't really want that either. Um, or at least if you are going to have an argument, you want to be able to say what you need to say without it being like a lashing out an anger thing. Um, and I feel like if we reach the end of an argument and I'm having, I don't feel like I've stated my case well enough, you know, that like there's something left on the table and then it's unfinished business and it doesn't feel good. All this to say that I've started keeping a list in my planner called Topics of Serious Night, um, where I am listing out things that are, like, big topics that need to be discussed at some point that I just don't feel like having that conversation, but it needs to happen at some point, and it needs to happen with Juno. Um, or things that, like, bother me about him, about a relationship, about life, whatever, things that, like, may turn into an argument, or at least things that, like, in some cases, it's sort of turned into like a journaling about my feelings. You know, when you do X, it makes me feel Y kind of statements um, to get my mind around it. And I've never actually pulled this spread out in the middle of a conversation or a serious night. Um, I've never like said like, oh, ah, on X, Y, Z date, you did X, Y, Z thing. 
Um, it's not like that. Um, you know, so it's not like a... I'm not cataloging grievances in order to be vindictive. I am just sort of keeping a list of the things that I want to talk about. Um, and once I feel like they've been resolved to the point where I don't have any pent-up resentment about it, I will check it off. So I think I'm going to make the title of this video something clickbaity, like why you should keep a list of grievances in your marriage or something like that. Like I said, I'm not trying to be like vindictive or um, scorekeeping, but it doesn't do anyone any good, I don't think, if you feel like you're not being heard or like you're not able to get your side out or not even evil, able to articulate what it is that bothers you. I have the personality where I think I, I tend to get angry about something and then I will very quickly say that I've forgiven someone almost only because I've kind of forgotten exactly what it was that made me upset in the first place. Um, and if it's a one-off thing, that's not a problem. Like. Forgiveness usually doesn't come very difficult to me, which is good. Um, but if it's something that can happen multiple times and I can never fully get my mind around exactly why it's bothering me, then it's never going to resolve and I'm going to start building up resentment over something that I can't even put a name to, you know? So that's why I have a list. I'm not going to pull it out and show you, um, but that's, that's my Valentine's Day message to you, is if you're having, okay, maybe not on Valentine's Day, but I would say if I were to give myself relationship advice when I was getting married, it would be, if you feel like you need to have an argument, have the argument, because you feel so much better afterwards, and you're on the same page, and you're able to, you know, cry and hug, and oh my gosh, there's so much crying. I am a crier. But I don't want to get into too many details because it's not just my life. So. Speaking of details, I think, I'm again not pulling out my planner to look, but I think that this is the topic of Sunday's video about pumping. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned and subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Um, and yeah, you get to, I don't know, see me, no makeup. So <laughs> I haven't worn makeup in like a month. This is Everyday Rebecca, signing off. See you in the next one. Bye.